In this video, we're going to talk about the symmetrical property of the normal distribution. First, let's review the normal distribution very quickly. We know it is for continuous variables. Now, continuous variables, because uh, they have essentially infinite values that they can encompass, um, a a as a result of that, we can't calculate the probability of the variable taking on any particular value. So let me give you an example. Let's say um, the weight of all the students in your school is normally distributed. It's known to be normally distributed. Well, if it is, we can't calculate the probability that any one given student, any randomly chosen student, equals 140 pounds, let's say. Because the probability of this is actually zero. And the reason for that is there are infinite values that the true weight can be right around 140. So it could be 139.9999999. It could be 140.00001. And that's the, um, that's the main characteristic of a continuous variable, is that it's not like discrete variables where you either have 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. Um, this can be any particular value uh, around 140. So the probability of the variable taking on one particular value is zero. Instead, we want to calculate things like what's the probability of one given person being greater than 140 pounds? That's something we can use this normal distribution for um, and, and something we can actually put some context around continuous variables as opposed to plucking out particular values. So that's an important concept to remember as we uh, get into this. What I've drawn here to the right is the standard normal distribution. Standard normal distribution we, we normally call the uh, random variable z, and it follows, again, a normal distribution with our mean, which we know is one of the main parameters we need, of 0. So you can see it's centered along 0 here, and standard deviation of 1. So I've drawn three standard deviations away from the mean on both sides. Now let's talk about the symmetry. Let's say we want to calculate three different probabilities of where our z value may fall. So let's say we want to find the probability that z is less than negative 1.94 as our first one. Okay, well, let's first visualize this. Again, the red curve shows uh, the vertical height of the red curve is essentially the frequency, right? So that is the frequency or how often the value along the base, these are our z values, how often this value comes up. So you can see it's highest at zero, and that's a main property of the normal distribution. That's the most popular value, in other words. So if we want the probability that z is less than negative 1.94, well, negative 1.94 is right here before 2. So here's the spot on the curve. You can see it's not a very high frequency value. Uh, and everything to the left of it, or less than negative 1.94, is even lower frequency. Therefore, we would expect this probability to be quite low. We know the, that the curve encompasses all possible values for z. So the total probability under the curve must be 1. Right? We know total probability of all particular outcomes is always 1 or 100 percent. You can see there's a lot more white space to the right of negative 1.4 than there is to the left so we would expect this value to be less than, uh, be quite small. Let's take a look at a table and find out what it is. Here's the friendly standard normal distribution table. As you can see the picture at the top of the table is really helpful. What we're going to do is we're going to pick any z value that we want and then we can reference the table and find the probability that we that our random var variable falls to the left of that z value. So in our case here, we're looking for the probability we fall to the left of negative 1.94. The first column here on the left, we look for negative 1.9. It's right there. The row along the top here is our second decimal place. So our second decimal place is 4. So I'm going to look at where negative 1.9 and 0.04 match up. It's right here. So this, po this probability is 0 0.0262. That's basically the area under the curve here in green, which if we write it in percentage form, we just move the decimals over two places, and it's 2.62%.
that's exactly what we thought. We thought it would be a very low chance that we're going to fall to the left of negative 1.94 standard deviations away from the mean. Great. Let's take a look at our next question. And again, we'll start to bring the, pro the property of symmetry and total probability in here in a second. Okay, so now the probability that z is greater than negative 0.3. And I'll try and do this area in red so that we can keep it all clear. So greater than negative 0.3. Well, 0 .3, negative 0 0.3 is just to the left of uh, 0. So it's somewhere up here, let's say. And we can see that that's going to be quite a bit of area. Now we know that 0 is the mean, which cuts the curve right in half. So there's 0.5 probability to the right of 0, 0.5 probability to the left of 0. Since our value of negative 0.3 is slightly to the left, and we're measuring all the area to the right, we would expect this value to be slightly greater than 0.5 because we know from 0 over it's 0.5 so negative 0.3 over there's a little bit more area there to include let's go see what it is negative 0 0.3 that's the very last value at the bottom of the table our second decimal is uh, 0 and we see 0 0.3821 well that's not more than 0.5 what does that mean oh yes that is the area to the left of negative 0.3. So that table actually just gave us this probability. Everything to the left of negative 0.3. How do you think we get the red probability? That's right, we subtract it from 1 because we know the total probability under the curve is 1. So we're going to subtract the probability that z is less than negative 0.3, which is 1 minus 0.3821 from the table there which is 0.6179. So that's using the law of basically total probability, knowing that there's a 100% chance that we fall under the curve somewhere. Last one, and this is a true, a true symmetrical property one. Probability that z is greater than 1.27. Okay, let's again find that spot on the curve. 1.27 is right in here somewhere. 1.27. If we want to be greater than this point, we're looking for this probability in blue. Great. Well, not only will we have to do, not only um, is that to the right, so it's not like being set up for this table because the table always calculates the probability to the left, but there aren't even positive z values on this table. You can see in this first column it's all negative z values. However, we know that our curve is perfectly symmetric around the mean. So if we find our negative value, so right here is negative 1.27, we know that the probability of falling to the left of negative 1.27, or in the tail of the curve, must be the same as falling to the right of positive 1.27. So let's write that out in notation. So this is the same as z being greater, less than, negative 1.27. Find that in the table. Negative 1, uh, I'm sorry, negative 1.2 right here. And 0 .7, 0 0.07 for our second decimal. So where do those meet? At 0 0.0120. 0 0.1020 or about 10.2%. So you can see that blue area is about 10.2% of the total area under the curve. It equals this area. We use this as a proxy to find this. And that shows the symmetrical properties and the total probability properties of the standard normal distribution.